Thanks uh, for the great job on the poetry of science. I wonder if you could say just a few words, both of you, on the philosophy of science. Just read uh, Stephen Hawkins' book, The Grand Design. Uh, first page, philosophy is dead. And here at Howard, our administration is proposing the abolition of our philosophy programs. Could you say a few words? I have a couple of words to say about that. Up until early 20th century, philosophers had material contributions to make to the, phys to the physical sciences. Uh, pretty much after quantum mechanics, remember the philosopher is the would-be scientist but without a laboratory, right? And so what happens is the 1920s come in, we learn about the expanding universe in the same decade as we learn about quantum physics, each of which falls so far out of what you can deduce from your armchair that the whole community of philosophers that previously had added materially to the thinking of the physical scientists were rendered essentially obsolete at that point. And I have yet to see a contribution. This will get me in trouble with all manner of philosophers, but I, I, I call me later and correct me if you think I miss, if, if I missed somebody here. But uh, philosophy has basically parted ways from the frontier of the, of the physical sciences. When there was a day when they were one and the same. Isaac Newton was a natural philosopher. The word physicist didn't even exist in any important way back then. So I'm disappointed because there's a lot of brain power there that might have otherwise contributed mightily, but today simply does not. Philosophy has other, it's not that there can't be other philosophical subjects. There's religious philosophy and ethical philosophy and political philosophy, plenty of stuff for the philosopher to do, but the frontier of the physical sciences does not appear to be among them. Even in biology, I think it's an interesting point that the idea of evolution by natural selection, uh, which came independently to two men, two traveling naturalists in the 19th century, it's a simple enough idea that any philosopher could have thought of it from the depths of an armchair anyway back to the Greeks, and none of them did. And, and I don't really understand that. It seems to me to be a, a strange thing that it had to wait for uh, two 19th century scientists living 200 years after Newton did something that seemed a lot more difficult. Um, well, check Anaxagoras. Sorry? Check Anaxagoras, first uh, theory of evolution in uh, uh, pre-Socratic Greeks. Oh, well, okay. Um, but natural selection is, is, um, is something that came in the 90s. Not just to Darwin and Wallace. I mean, there were a couple of other scientists who, who, who thought of it. The philosophers that I really respect in the world today, philosophers of science, are ones who've actually taken the trouble to learn some science. And there are some. And they're very good, clear thinkers. And they do help other people to, to think clearly. But they're, they're really the same as scientists. I mean, they're, they're scientists um, um, who, who, who are also trained in, in philosophy.